Welcome, Achievers. We're going to be talking Destiny 2 today around opening night live, of course, happening uh, as I'm discussing this. We'll be covering that, too. But I wanted to discuss some of that final shape reactions that we got. wanted to talk about what we can expect from the expansion. And I want to just really give my thoughts and, of course, listen to you guys on what you think is going to happen in the last bit of Destiny 2 as we know it right now. And what are your thoughts on what we just saw? And are you excited or not? I'm of course, excited, but we'll talk about final thoughts at the end. But of course, I'll be playing the thing kind of in the background here. Uh, this will be this is the entire showcase, by the way. I did turn the audio off just because one, you can hear me better. Two, uh, do we really need audio? You know what's going on. But let's discuss some of this here now. In this whole final shape kind of cinematic thing we got going here, you know, it discusses our journey. Uh, not not too important, so I'm just going to skip that and go into what we can expect from the actual game and the uh open what they showcase they pretty much open with in my opinion what they usually open with with uh, the destination called the pale heart so we're going inside the traveler we already knew this of course but we're going inside the traveler and it looks like there may be some sort of mashup of all of the places in here or maybe all past places kind of in here or maybe some of them because we did see a lot of europa in a lot of the things, because I, I feel like I remember seeing ice. Speaking of which, can I find that final shape here? No. Because I remember we saw a bunch. Yeah, see, there's all these different environments inside of this. Uh, and yeah, like, look, look how different this looks versus like the um kind of more flowery textures of the, like eat like what's going on here like do we are we getting parts of like the edz are we seeing like complete darkness takeover of some of the pale heart so like we'll enter in everything's light and then we see the invasion part or or where it is like yeah like this looks all darkness of course taken is there so that means there's more darkness around the maybe edges or maybe that's in the far far edges of that I assume that's where the witness is that of course big monolithic tower that they're walking up maybe that is where the main of course antagonist the witness is and I assume that's where the raid will be because the raid it will of course be about facing the witness I'll be curious how the campaign will work because they already said like we're we're fighting the witness in the raid so like are we fighting the witness in the campaign and then it's almost like oryx where you fight him and then he goes to the raid i'm assuming that's how it's gonna go we're gonna fight like maybe a little bit of him there and then he's gonna like reimagine himself into the raid or something who knows uh more details here um, again more darkness imagery in these things i'll be very curious to see what the actual pale heart looks like when we enter the game because we we see a lot of darkness we see a lot of different places that almost look like they're mashed up like you've taken slices of different worlds and put them together i'm not sure if that's what it's actually gonna look like or if that's just something they use to show how different it is of course we have the new enemy here um what was this guy's name i don't remember i'm gonna turn on the thing just to remind myself inquisitor i think it was in the final shape they have an enhanced power keep in One of the things that we really tried to also capture is that the witness keeps throwing everything it has at you. And so you're going to fight these new enemies, the subjugators. Subjugators, that's what it was. That's right. We'll be fighting more of that very pyramid-esque Rolk and Nezirai kind of looking characters here. Looks like he's actually using Strand and, and the other one will be using Stasis. So that's cool. We get to kind of fight things harnessing the darkness in a very specific way that's more scary of course we saw other darknesses and all the way in beyond light but that was never really scary that much uh so it will actually find something that maybe will scare us this time uh and then of course they show off the, the weapon archetypes and all these things here uh but uh, i think i'm pretty much done discussing about the pay i don't i'm again very pretty confused yeah, see we get all this imagery of of the, the stuff in there and then anyways let's move on to what, do, what what should we discuss next? I'll, I'll quickly go over what new weapon archetypes they debuted. Like, oh, there's a sidearm that shoots like a rocket launcher, kind of. And it, like, debuted. It kind of shoots almost like, a, I think it's called the Final Warning. Uh, the side, the exotic sidearm, sidearm that Stasis, or not Stasis, sorry, Strand, that came out with the newest expansion, of course, um, Lightfall. 
So it kind of looks like that, but it's going to be shooting uh, rockets and you don't have to hold the trigger, maybe. Uh, but they'll be doing new archetypes. Uh, there was also the new auto rifle where you can shoot people and you can seamlessly shoot someone and then shoot a uh, ally to heal them, which is pretty cool. I'll be curious to see how strong that is, uh, because in Destiny, we don't have a lot of health. So is it going to be percentage? It Will it be just raw uh, numbers, how much they will do? I don't know, but... We'll see how strong that is, and they they said more, maybe more will come. I don't know. And um, and since we're sticking with weapons, let's just quickly go over the four exotics. We saw Dragon's Breath coming back from, of course, D one. Looks like a lot of D one stuff. Uh, the Kvostov is coming back. A very cool, you know, nostalgia stuff. Necrochasm will, of course, come back with the raid that's being reprised. We'll cover that in a second. Uh, and I'm missing one. What was the other one? Oh, uh, 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 Red Death. Red Death, which is Crimson, but a Pulse Rifle. I'm, I'm curious why they're bringing that back. I'm assuming it's going to work pretty much completely different. Dragon's Beth completely worked absolutely different uh, than the way it did in D1. Ooh, it's, we're seeing the new supers there. Very much like that. Uh, uh, here, let's, uh, let's pause this because I actually want to talk about supers in a second. I'll quickly talk about the four returning exotics. Very excited about them. They look very cool. We'll have to see more when they come. Uh, and then now let's talk about supers. So they are debuting three new supers in light. And, and it looks like actually, let me back up. They're doing three new supers and it looks like three aspects as well. They're going to be one for each thing. So, or I guess, no, one, one class will be missing for each uh, sub uh, class, I, I guess. Because we have the new aspect or new super for solar warlocks that pretty much looks like the D1 super where you completely overcharge all your abilities. The only difference is it looks like it is much, much stronger. Uh, you, some, you see here, you summon a rift, it shoots out at people and like does a giant explosion uh, that will repeatedly happen apparently. Um, unclear if that's... Did they say that it's an aspect or a this is the only range fragment? On no, not a fragment. Sorry, a super. To create this little solar soul that when it sees their solar weapons, supercharged, applying scorch when they're shooting. Applying scorch when they're shooting, yeah. When I cast my rift, it is going okay, so it is a solar uh, warlock aspect. So when you cast your rift, you'll get that. So that's an aspect. That's not actually part of the super. So they'll be getting... An aspect and a super for each thing. I'm guessing, yeah, that makes sense. So, e so the solar for warlock will get a, a super and an aspect. Void for titan. I'm guessing you'll also get a super and an aspect. What was the aspect for titan? Oh, the grenade. You eat the grenade and the the banner shield comes up, so you get like a free banner. Okay, and then arc for hunter, where you do the thing that makes everyone amplified around you. Definitely not as stylish as everyone else got, uh, but it's. It might be one of the most useful, giving like free amplification whenever you want it. Uh, who knows? Uh, the the to Void Titan looks actually the most potent, of course, with the super where you can l lunge three axes at a target and then pick them up and run around and kill stuff with. That's pretty sick. Uh, that's pretty sick. Hopefully it's good uh, because with the axes, uh, unless they change it, you can't block with them. So you have to really hope you're not going to die when you pick one of those things up. Uh, so they might be really just for a low to mid content there. Uh, the uh, let's discuss. Uh, actually, let's let's do let's do that. Sorry about this. There we go. Um. Oh, of course. They, and we didn't even talk about the arc. So the arc super, of course, you throw. You just saw it on screen. You throw the knife, hit the ground, spin it around. It looks very sick. Very happy how they're doing the supers and the aspects. I'm assuming they can't get the uh, new subclass in time, so they had to ditch it. Uh, maybe we'll get that in whatever is after Final Shape. Uh, they did detail, and we'll, we kind of got there naturally, so let's just do that. They did detail how the Final Shape will work when the season or the actual thing is done. How can we, yeah, episodes... And so we're moving away from the seasonal model, which kind of makes sense to me. Uh, it seems like, and they said this a little bit in the post show. I only watched a little bit of it, but they kind of detail, hey, you know, 
the seasonals were such a tight, were so tight that we had to be repetitive almost in the nature of the product. Uh, because you, you couldn't really invent anything because you had to get it out on time. So they're now dropping a season and making three episodes instead. And they're going to be, I, I want to say, every six weeks it was where you'll get some sort of new drop in an act. And I assume it will be also new missions, maybe. Or maybe uh, uh, just new weapons. I don't Will it be the same? Like right here. See, we see. So we see the dates here. New episodic cadence. So March to June. Of course, this drops in February, by the way. So February 27th. So we have a, f a little while before this episode starts making makes sense. Uh, and I actually like this model, so we don't have a season and an expansion at the same time, because although the seasons were always really good when they launched together, um, I feel like you can let the expansion kind of breathe a little better, and then we go into a new episode. So here we are, March to June, we have Echoes, uh, and every six weeks will be a new act. So let's actually, let me let it go for one more second so we can see like all the breakdowns. There we go. Let that all populate. Okay, so we see Act 1, new quests, new stories, new activities, new weapons, artifact mods, pass ranks, passwords, new armor. So let's do a couple things that we can, first off, figure out just by the information they give us, right? Season passes stay. We're still going to have artifacts in some way, right? We're going to have some sort of artifact mods that will stick with us. Season pass rewards and all these things will, be, uh, will hit us. Uh, don't know why that's there twice. That's kind of weird. Um, new weapons, of course, new armor. So things that you can expect to come with the season, uh, the season model we have now, of course, now in this act one model, new activities, I'm assuming new activities leaves it open for it not to always be a new seasonal activity, maybe, or maybe there'll be some sort of different thing in the core playlist. I don't know. We'll have to see what they do with that. Of course, the new story, they'll have a, they, an episodic story that that happens New quests, I'm assuming that's, of course, referencing, hey, uh, there's a new exotic uh, quest maybe around this time that starts on this act and we'll keep it up every act or so. And then this pretty much continues throughout the six weeks period. If you see, you can kind of see the next act over here. So we have Echoes and then Revenant is a little bit as it looks like it's pretty much the exact same stuff. Uh, new story, new quests, you know, nothing different. It, it, you know, you can't really... Uh, piece out what you think it is of course we're seeing the crown for new quests here we see a book which means new story so that you know more stories so you get that six weeks period you get all that stuff everything you get to play then we go to the next six weeks period then we have more new activities more um uh interesting so they have artifact mods here in the second six week period that's interesting. I'm curious if that is trying to say that we will not have time gated mods, maybe, which will not be awesome. But depending on what they do, that might not matter or they just put it there to fill it up. And they have it there again as as act three week as well. So every six weeks, maybe we'll be able to unlock more artifact mods. That doesn't sound very nice, uh, but maybe they'll completely revamp the system. Uh We'll have to learn about that later because they didn't detail really anything about that. And if they did, I, I missed it. Uh, and it does say new weapons, everything else. So maybe we're getting a season over the next three weeks. Maybe there'll be more total stuff, right? Uh, the one thing we don't notice here, of course, new armor is nowhere to be found on that screen here. Of course, we're just seeing it here. So we're pretty much seeing, let's see, three, six, seven, and you see eight. So that's pretty much the only thing that's not there. So everything else will happen again. You'll get, of course, new stories, new activities, all these things. So I'll be curious to see if this is just a different name for a season or will this be a very different way of attempting this kind of uh, ongoing games as a service that Destiny has, this MMO light kind of aspect that we have going with Destiny. Will, will this uh, help or hinder something? And of course, on the top of your new exotic weapon, new exotic mission at the very top, I didn't cover that, expected since it's not in act one, two or three, I'm curious if it's always up in the air when it's going to happen, maybe, or maybe it'll be a secret when it happens every time. Not really sure. Maybe it will be a hidden quest in act one. Well, that, that'll just be, we'll have to figure that out when, when we see more stuff, this is a big overview of everything. Uh, it's just, I mean, let's be honest. It's the same format, just three times with three different names, uh, and backgrounds to kind of hint at what's happening. So of course, act one, Kinda looks like we have a Hive Guardian. 
I imagine that's a Hive Guardian. It's hard to tell. It doesn't look... Nah, it might be a Vex. It has that classic Vex shape. So maybe we have something different with the Vex happening. Because that almost looks humanoid. It almost looks humanoid. So it doesn't look like a Vex. It doesn't quite look like a Hive Guardian. Maybe it's a mixture of both. Or maybe it's just his own thing. Maybe this is a new enemy we'll fight. I love the motto though. It has that classic Vex half semicircle head on the top there it looks very cool and then we of course go into july and october for revenant that's my man fickrel in the background uh worthless sack of meat or whatever he said in that uh uh strike we played a million times uh, i'm assuming we're gonna be seeing fickrel come back we see a bunch of screebs kind of in his background we have that classic uh kind of blue that really uh it reminds me a lot of Beyond Light, and it says Revenant too, which is funny. Uh, of course, it has nothing to do with probably Beyond Light. It'll probably just be Fickrel's, you know. the uh, If I remember right, the lore of Fickrel is he keeps reviving himself because he's, like, of the dead or something like that. I can't remember the reason. I think he's, he did, like, some sort of magical necromancy thing. He just keeps coming back. So maybe we'll finally kill him there, or maybe there'll be something new with him. Uh, I don't know. And then, of course, we go into the third kind of thing here. We just see hive swords in the ground. Uh, and it kind of looks like a hive worm, maybe, in the background. I can't really tell. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't tell. And I'm assuming here is slight hints at what we're going to see, but not too much. If if I uh, didn't know better, of course, we know now because Crota's End is the re revisal raid. I would say, oh, Crota might be coming in this one. But, of course, that's not the case. Maybe we see more of Crota. Uh, maybe we just see, hey, this is a hive season slash episode. And that's just trying to, to convey that. And there's really nothing else to look into. Uh, but that's something else to look out for. That is the episodic feature episode-esque thing of uh, other thing. And they do the overviews here. I can't. I don't really feel like anything was shown. Uh, they did a lot of like, uh, oh, you know, this, oh, by the way, this video is from GameSpot, uh, with, which they had the uh, very nice way of, of putting um, chapters and all these things. I was going to use Destiny's, but I couldn't find the actual showcase. Um, so I don't know if it was bugs or something, but it wasn't showing up when I was looking at this stuff. Anyways, uh, that's episodes. Let's uh, dig into, we talked pretty much all about Final Shape and we talked a lot about what we know about the final shape. We definitely, we did, we technically did not discuss uh, Cade Six coming back. Where can we find Cade Six? Uh, is he here? Oh no, this is where they detailed that. We'll, we'll skip. We'll skip that. We'll, we'll just play it from here. So, Cade Six is coming back. We, of course, another thing we already knew. It doesn't really look like they discussed why he's here yet or anything like that we don't get any specifics it was just kind of a celebratory like hey k6 back nathan fillion's back we're really happy he's back uh it didn't feel right without having him and they kind of move on so there isn't really much else to discuss i feel like with that uh so oh i think this is actually the second round. yeah it is uh so they kind of yeah they have just a little thing about k6 i feel like there wasn't much there uh, it kind of just is like, hey, you remember Kate Six? You know, we liked him. I know we know you guys like him. Here, here he's back. They also announced that they're bringing back right now, live in the game, the uh, Kate's Last Stand first mission of Forsaken, so people can experience it. I t <laughs> so not to look a gift horse in the mouse. I'm not really sure why, um, because. So I understand like someone's snap reaction, like yeah, it's so people know more about Kate. Uh, in that mission, he we just see him die. We don't really... It, it doesn't really add much to it. It's just that mission. So... Oh, I'm not really sure why it's being added. Maybe just to test the waters to see if this is something people care about. I locked into the game for like two seconds just to uh, look around and see if I can piece anything out for this video. Uh, and the mission is up and you get Monte Carlo actually for it, which is a perfect way of... People getting Marty Carlo for the new Catalyst that just launched with Season of the Witch. Of course, we'll be talking about that in a second. But, yeah, he's back. Uh, cool. Uh, you get to play the new mission. Or, not, sorry, the old mission again. Uh, okay. Um, you know, maybe doing the whole campaign was just way too much of, of an effort. Uh, I would have... I don't know. 
going into this, I really thought we would have some sort of summary episode that people could play to kind of open them up to, hey, you know, this is what's happened uh, leading up to the final shape in kind of a few highlight moments, or maybe there'll be a long cinematic maybe people can watch. I'm not really sure, but, you know, when someone comes up to me, and I was actually asked way back on Podcast PXN? No. I don't think it was. Maybe it was Large Popcorn Pod. It, back in the day, um, when Lightfall was launching, or it had just launched, I believe, I was on a podcast discussing it, and one thing that came up was like, oh, you know, it, it, you like it, do you recommend it? And I was like, it's hard to recommend because we're just knee-deep in all this dialogue. How do do people, will, will people like it? I don't know. Uh, there's a lot you're missing out on, so I would say yes if you love the gameplay. Um, and maybe that was actually Witch Queen, I'm sorry. No, that was the Witch Queen. Uh, so I was like, yeah, you know, if you like the gameplay of Bungie, definitely pick it up, but know that we're having a big story moment that you're just not going to care about because you don't have no idea what's going on. And you're not really going to care, I feel like. Like most people will. And I feel like that's also a situation here because we're not... It doesn't seem like they can do a good primer for everyone. Uh, I really thought we would see something like, hey, the expansions are free uh, for these weekends or something. Get in, try it out, see if you like it, something like that. Doesn't look like any of that is happening. Just business as usual. Buy them, don't buy them. They're very confusing. What do I buy to do what kind of thing? It's still a thing. Uh, I'm going to pause it actually because because this is a perfect place I want to pick up for Season of the Witch is happening right now. But um, mm, uh, I think that's pretty much everything I want to discuss. I'm just surprised that they're not really trying to do much onboarding. It just seems like, hey... Yeah, we know you. If this is to people who like Destiny, hey, we know you like Destiny. Come back because it's good. Uh, maybe there'll be something with the final shape that drops that is like, hey, here's the Santa Mac. Boom, 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 boom. Here's this, 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 this. You know, the journey up to this moment that maybe you can skip or something uh, if you know what's all going on. But I, I don't know. I, I that was one thing that was sorely missing. Again, we're not in the final thoughts yet, but that just it struck out to me that. There was really nothing about that. We'll get to how they're doing kind of onboarding a little later, not in the way that I would think they would, but Destiny isn't a story. Let's hold it. Let's get into Season of the Witch. Um, that's happening right now. It's live as of recording, and of course, when you're listening to this, I did the opening mission. So far, so good. Literally did one mission, got off to come do this. Uh, cool. Looks great. Looks like Season of the Witches. Witching. Witching along. Looks very cool. Of course, we see this very cool Eris Morn transformation into um, some sort of hive being. I mean, she looks sick. Are you kidding me? Like, that looks awesome. Uh, curious if she'll stay that way. I assume she will. But maybe she won't. Uh, and it looks like we'll be using, utilizing hive magic. Uh, of course, in line with how we are with Savathun. Of course, she is very, very much... Uh, utilizing hive magic we utilize that in uh witch queen to uh see secrets and like move past uh walls that that were you know uh, walls beforehand but you know now that you could investigate it with this kind of special power you could see through it of course in her throne world now we need to have a thing for you know seasonal story stuff and the you know, you know the narrative needs her so we are going to try and get her back into the narrative uh, and apparently to do that, we need to kill in quotes or not in quotes. I'm not really sure. Um, the, uh, her, uh, her sister and uh, the God of war, um, for the hive God of war, um, can't believe I'm blanking on her name. I don't know. I have a million things going through my head right, head right now, but, uh, and then they showcase the new exotics for the season in these things. Uh, very, very exciting. The season right now, so far, just off brush, looks very good. Very excited. I was not at all interested in last season. Uh, it was very bad from both a seasonal activity standpoint. Deep dives were okay, but got pretty pretty boring pretty fast to me. Uh, after four or five of them, I was like, I don't want to do these anymore. Uh, and then, of course, fishing and all these things weren't, weren't bad to me, but it's just after a while, you can only do so much where you're like, this is mind-numbingly boring. I can't do this anymore. Uh, this looks much more refreshing. It looks like we are knee deep into things. It looks very, uh, 
that aesthetic of the witch queen and uh, uh, that kind of hive is ever present throughout all this. Very, very excited. I, I am very excited to see. I hope this Cena story is good. I think it will be. Uh, I'm almost positive it will be because I just I love Savathun so much. I think she's such a good character in this story. Uh, and she's pretty much the reason the Witch Queen was good. Uh, if we really think about it, Destiny 2 has had one really good campaign. It's called the Witch Queen. Everything else is pretty not good. So we got something that was very good with the Witch Queen. And I'm hoping we get more of that here. And I'm hoping they use that narrative strength to go into the final shape. Because we have one more season after this. So we'll see how that works out for them. I'm terrified, to be honest with you. Um, that season of The Witch, uh, they quickly detailed a uh, the season pass exotic. It's a grenade launcher. We don't know what the exotic mission weapon is, of course. Uh, we only know what the... Uh, that season, season pass that you'll get if you have the season pass already as soon as you log in. Uh, it, it's cool because you can summon butterflies. I like that a lot. Uh, of course, you have the, uh, I'll quickly go over the uh, season pass armor, not season pass armor, I'm sorry, the uh, exotic armors for each subclass. Uh, Warlock, you get a, uh, th so all three are gauntlets. The Warlock gauntlets uh, make your Void Soul stronger, uh, and you can pick them back up and, and keep uh, using them, uh, and they last longer. Uh, the Titan ones are, um, uh, it's hard to explain, so Burning Maul, is now a one hit and with that one hit it summons a giant cyclone of fire consecration also does that so that's only as good as what that is what that whatever that means we don't know what cyclone of flame means or does how much damage that does i i'm excited if it's good it's good i love playing solar titan so if Consecration is good, that'll make me very, very happy. I love Consecration. It's just sometimes it doesn't feel that strong or the windup, you know, takes a long time. Sometimes you go to do it and you're just dead before you even hit the ground. So I'm hoping with this, with that risk reward, I can kind of get away with it and, you know, maybe use it a little more often. Very exciting. Uh, and then the uh, Hunter one is your grenades now have a cage of butterflies uh moth uh sorry not about moth i call them butterflies they're i know they're moths the lucent moths uh and then they'll break and go and fight people if they go to an alley they give you a void over shield if they go and just and blow up on an enemy it blinds them and of course does damage so and then that's the exotic armor for for this season you can go of course do lost sectors and all, and all these things all right now this section was called how we rise together and they detail the fire team finder thing that they're adding to the game we've known that for a while they've actually wanted this out i think a season ago uh maybe even uh, a season and a season ago I don't, i'm not really sure but i know for a fact they wanted it bef uh they wanted it much more before then but i guess they couldn't get it to work or maybe they had some sort of hurdle that that they had to, to cross but it is going to, it is in the game it's going to be ready for this raid and you are able to do lots of things. So Crota's ends back. Of course, we already know that. Uh, they didn't really detail that the, that much. They kind of just quickly went over like, oh, this is what the encounters kind of look like. And then they just bowed out. We didn't really see anything. We did see that the original D1 armor is back. Uh, the Age of um, Triumph armor, I think is what it was called in D1, uh, is back. And it looks very cool. But the thing that they detailed with the um, fire team. Uh, and you see right here, perfect timing. One thing that they detailed, and of course, this isn't live in the game. This will be with the file shape. It's called Fire Team Power. You see it on the screen right now. My head, of course, my giant head is blocking it. But it boosts the power of the group to, to near the highest level player, right? So there will no longer be a need for everyone to be a max level. We see it right here, like just like that, right? So they queued up a raid, Root of Nightmares. Um, uh, by the way, it, interesting... Uh, change at the bottom left here um let me quickly move my head uh interesting change here i wonder why uh these are s like this looks like this now because it's master and master is 2010 so they'll move up master interesting the the revive thing i don't know it doesn't look like i don't think it looks like this now so it definitely looks different i'm curious why it looks like that uh, maybe i'm just losing my mind uh, I'm like never the, the director in my fire team. 
Like, I'm never the guy who picks things, so that might just exactly what it looks like. Anyways, moving on. So, if we see it here, fire team power. Oh, it's kind of cut off here. Let me move that a little bit so y'all can see it. There we go. So, fire team power, 1975, master, 2010. So, we see a 1900 as the main person right now, right? So, we see a 1980 person moving right now. That brings up the total power level of everyone to 1975. Right, still too low for a master, uh, but you know you're uh, eh, not that low. I guess it's not important. And then of course, if we have someone else join, they're about to have someone else join a two thousand level, which is much closer to where you want to be. But it, it master's cap now, so it doesn't matter. And that brings it up to nineteen ninety five, which I believe meets the threshold of how powerful you can be in a master, because I want to say master is the max you will be is twenty under, pretty sure, or something like that. So, this is a, of course, new thing. All the fire team will now average everyone's fire team and put them throughout everyone. So, you can bring your person who's new to the game immediately into a raid. As long as the other five people are pretty high level, your average will go down, but probably not that much. I imagine the whole point of this is, hey, we just need half to, to a majority of the fire team to be at max level. Uh, and everyone will be able to play with you. Uh, very, very cool. I very much like that. I did see a little people. So one of my uh, friends I know on my clan Discord pretty much was like, ah, this is scary because, you know, I want people to play the game uh, with me and things. And, things. And, and although I understand, I just don't. If, if you don't want to level your character up, I feel like you wouldn't be there regardless. Like, this is just to skip that part. Right. If you're if you're leveling your character, you're probably already doing the other stuff. Uh, you're 100 percent doing the other stuff you need to level up. So uh, otherwise, why would you level Two, if you weren't going to level, then you wouldn't spend the time to level because because we know you wouldn't have done it. If you're not at level right now and you have it multiple seasons, multiple years, I'm sure Bungie has the numbers. They're like, hey. They don't level. They just leave the game. So let's just skip that and try and see if we can hold on to these people a little longer. I To me, that makes sense. Uh, maybe it doesn't to everyone. And maybe what I just said doesn't make any sense. But to me, it just feels like we, they do, that, do this for a specific reason. Hey, this is a way to skip the leveling process because we know the people who aren't leveling are leaving anyways. So we might as well try and keep them along with saying, hey, you don't have to love anymore. Just do just just skip right to it as long as you have some friends to play with. I don't mind. I think it's actually pretty smart. I actually never thought about this. I thought they would do away with the whole ranking system and pretty much make it like uh, and, and they and they still kind of might, which almost like Guardian ranks where like you do objectives in the game that will boost your level, not necessarily the gear itself but it looks like it will still be gear but you'll be able to get higher with other people and then of course this is fire team finder uh this is a techo mock-up so this this is probably not what it will finally look like but we see um uh crucible campaign and all these things uh it might not look like that in game i'm pretty sure it will though because uh, i'm pretty sure it's final there we go. Yeah, tags and all these things. You can tag everything. I, I feel like this is pretty straightforward. It's an, a really good LFG uh, toolkit. You can, of course, put if, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm colorblind. And, you know, these are the language I speak. Uh, you know, we're looking for something chill, et cetera, et cetera. Very cool. Very happy. I have a clan, so I'm not really honestly worried about this. Not really uh, uh, in the need for this feature. So this was never going to be for me anyways. Uh, but I'm very happy for the people who want this. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's just about everything that we need to cover. Right? I think so. Yeah, talk about the, we talked about the new supers. Oh, uh, let's talk quickly about the season pass thing. So this is the season pass weapon. You can get it right now if you sit if you put a pre-order down for the final shape. Um, I did it on Xbox, but they don't charge you for until like two weeks before the game comes out, so it's not really important. Oh, and I want to talk I wanted to talk about that very quickly too. Um so let's talk about this gun. So this gun is the first weapon to actually adapt to your subclass that you have equipped. So as you see here, he's on strand. Boom, shoots a strand protector. And if you saw earlier, 
it shot a void projectile um, at like max charge. So there's two things that's happening here. One, as soon as you put it on, it changes the power to whatever your subclass is. And it's your energy slot. That's important to note energy slot so you can technically have all strand and all stasis now which was never a possibility before so this actually does that for you don't know if anyone cares about that i guess you could do some crazy stuff with all three of your things all being stasis surged plus you know you, you like all that on top of all of your weapons is pretty good now that i think about it so it's not that bad uh so this is a fusion rifle i don't know the charge time uh I should have looked before I got in here. It's, I guess it's not that important. But again, it adapts to what your subclass is. And it has a special ability of if you load your grenade into it. So if you hold X, it consumes your grenade charge. And it has one fully charged projectile that shoots um, for high damage. Kills also replenish your grenades. So it pretty much has demo. And it has that special feature. And of course, it changes to whatever subclass you have. Pretty cool very happy about this this looks pretty sick i'm a big fan of fusions this thing looks nuts very destiny very much like it i don't think i have any other notes about that gun other than that it looks sick can't wait to mess around with it uh i'm using the new i use the new grenade launcher from the season pass thing it's pretty cool it it's honestly kind of strong because um it auto reloads for you um so like you never have to reload it but it's not that strong in terms of raw damage, but you can just keep shooting the thing, which isn't bad. And you can make moths, which is kind of cool. Yeah, see, so you kind of saw that. Shoot, you know, you put the thing up, it makes the super strong projectile. Very cool. Very, very cool. That was a stasis one, too, which was very nice. And then they talk uh, some, like... I, I don't know what they... So this is the, oh, what if Golden Gun was a gun? How do I say this? I don't know how this is like they just were like, hey, you know, isn't this cool? I'm curious where this goes. Like, will this be the seasonal weapon or one of these like the seasonal weapons for the season f for the final shape? I I'm not sure. They just kind of threw it out there. Hey, what if Golden Gun's a gun? And then they show that and then they kind of move on. So I'm like, OK, maybe they're just like, hey, you know, there's that. And then they they did a, another hypothetical, like, well, you know, what if the, there's a giant beam gun? So this is like the light beam from the Traveler. What if that is a gun? Cool stuff. It's just randomly put out there. So I'm like, OK, maybe these are like, oh, you know, this might be an exotic mission for one of the episodes. Uh, and then this is the, the weapon you get. I, I don't know. But, the, you know, it was just kind of randomly brought up and they just kind of moved on. So Cool. Looks sick. Can't wait for that. And this is where they showcase the D1 guns coming back. Because again, Dragon Breath, completely different. From what it looks like, I'm pretty sure they don't... Yeah, they only show concept art. They don't really show anything else. Of course, Kvostov is there. And then uh, that's pretty much it here. Because I don't even think they show any other weapon. They just say Red Death's coming back. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Necrochasm, of course, is coming back because of Korda's End. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways. Oh, and here's that new weapon archetype, that kind of rocket pistol thing. But I'm going to let that play, and uh, I'm ready to talk final thoughts, honestly, uh, and really what I think about this showcase. So one, um, I think it was very good. Um, now, I have to admit, I overhyped it. And I want to be clear about this. I My original thoughts were... Oh, wow. I really thought they were going to kind of blow me away and I just wasn't blown away. But but I think I overhyped it just a bit. I don't think that's really anyone's fault other than myself. This is just on brand destiny. This is what they're bringing. They're bringing the final shape. They showed us a little bit about final shape. Hey, here's some weapons. Here's some new features. And they got out. This is what they've done in the last three showcases. So I can't be too mad at it. I really think I built this up a little too much more legends forever stuff i'll skip it to like something where we can actually see them play the game the beginning of that um i think this was very good uh, i think they showcased the season well i think they showcased how well the uh, expansion is going to be i think all this is going to be great i want to be clear it's just i think i overhyped it just a tad I really thought they were going to bring something crazy to this thing. And they kind of did. Um, like, these things are very cool. It's just not 
exactly what I, you know, what, what I thought. I thought maybe it was like, you know, hey, I honestly thought they were going to start an initiative of bringing back the D- uh, things that are in the DCV as like separate installs or something. We kind of saw leaks that were kind of happening there, but I always thought that was the plan to kind of uh, revamp them, but maybe not. I'm not really sure what is happening with all of that. Like, why is it still gone? Right? Like, wh- why are there so many things that still aren't in the game? People paid for that stuff. So I've, I really thought they'd be faster on the ball with this, and they just weren't. So I'm not really sure what that's about, to be honest. Um, but I wanted to qu- uh, quickly bring that up. I think it was very good. I definitely overhyped it. Uh, I thought this was going to be something very, very, very special, and it was just very good. And I don't think this really bad. I just think I expected more, which is it, which no, it's fine. I again, I I pre-ordered this thing. This was never there was never going to be a not pre-order unless this thing was going to co- be a complete trash fire, and that just wasn't going to happen. Uh, I think that was a lesser chance than anything of it actually being bad. This is all going to be very, very good. It's just you know. I know a lot of people are upset that there's no new subclass. I never really cared, to be honest. I actually would have taken this over. That is fine with me. Uh, the new subclass is a bit of a letdown, but with how everything happened with Lightfall and COVID and all these things, kind of breaking everything up, and, you know, it messed them up so bad to where I guess they just can't include this. I'll be curious to see if they do, how they will include a new subclass. I'm assuming in another expansion at some point. Because they're not just going to give that away. So how's that going to work? I assume they weren't going to have a new expansion for another two years after this thing launches. for To really give them time to make something special. But maybe they won't. Maybe it'll just be still Destiny 2 stuff and they don't change that much. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Anyways. That's pretty much... I, I was pretty thorough with my thoughts. I thought this was very good. I think if you were expecting much else... You probably overhyped it just as much as I did, uh, which will happen. I usually am pretty good about that, but this time I th- I really thought they were going to have one big, big announcement. And to me, this was missing that one, this is happening, get excited. Uh, right now, it was all kind of, I think it would have been more shocking, of course, if they had a new subclass. But aside from that, I don't really have anything else to say. This was good, but, you know, this was good. This was great even just wasn't amazing and i was expecting that what are your thoughts of course let me know in the comments below you can tweet at me at evm8000 let me know what you thought about this react showcase did you like it did you hate it did you love it have you already pre-ordered i already told you i'm already pre-orders already in for me so let me know what you think thank you so much and of course go chief